What we're looking to do here is to build dexterity and coordination and basically build your uh, rein and your rope handling skills. This exercise is called soft hands. We're using this as a warm-up exercise because it's really helpful to do this when you can focus just on the, the scale, the mechanics of what you're doing, instead of also being on the back of your horse or trying to lunge your horse at the same time that you're figuring out and learning some of these basic mechanics. So I'm gonna start here with rein handling and with um, learning how to effectively shorten the reins. So what I've done is I've just simply taken reins and I've hooked them together around a stall bar here. That just uh, creates a little bit more height to the reins. You could actually do this with the reins just dropped on the ground too, but giving them a little bit height uh, gives it more of a feel like you were actually on the back of a horse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, take a feel of my reins here as if I was riding. I've got just a little bit of contact and uh, I'm gonna practice shortening my reins with the pinch and slide method. So a lot of times when people shorten the reins, they do it in um, what's sometimes called creepy crawly hands, trying to work your hands down the reins or they do it by kind of dropping the rein and trying to grab again. Both of those are ineffective because the one, the contact is lost. So if you were actually looking to give an aid to the horse and you had an amount of contact there for that aid, and then you go to start trying to shorten your reins, you've lost that contact. The other thing that's a problem is when we start to shorten these other ways, either by trying to jump the hand down or by wiggling it down the rein, we, um, create the potential for the rein to more easily drop. If the horse happens to shake his head in that moment or he trips a little bit, we can easily drop the rein accidentally. So what I'm gonna show you here is shortening the rein with pinch and slide. What that's gonna look like is you're going to take one thumb and you're going to pinch the rein between um, the other rein, between your forefinger and your thumb. And then this hand is gonna be able to slide down. Notice how as it slides down, I'm able to keep a consistent contact so this slides down to the new length. I drop that excess out, and I do the same thing on the other side. I pinch here with my thumb, pinch the rein right above where my other hand is, slide this hand down, drop that one out, and now my reins are at the correct length. Here, you can see she's gonna pinch the rein on the top, slide her hand down, pinch, and slide the other hand down. And now the reins are at the same length. So again, pinch, slide, pinch, slide. Now, if I want to lengthen them again, I just softly um, soften my fingers and I just let the rein slide out. I'm going to do that again. Pinch, slide, pinch, slide. So as you get a feel for the basic mechanics of this, now it's time to just practice with it. As you're learning it, you're probably looking down at your hands, but now let your eyes go up and see if you can shorten your reins without looking down. See if also, if you can make the movement through the rest of your arms a little smaller. Again, when we're first learning, we often have kind of excess movement. You might've found that your elbows went really far out or you slid down the rein really far. Now see if you can make this movement as small as it can be. Might mean that you're shortening the reins just a little bit each time. It means that you're allowing your elbows to just still hang instead of coming out to the side and just keep doing this until it feels really natural, until you feel like you could do it in your sleep. It's such a simple exercise, but this is one of the most important things to have that it is just second nature and automatic for you because your ability to quickly shorten the reins can have a really big impact in those emergency kind of situations. If a horse starts to spook or he starts to bolt at something, or even if he just speeds up, when you can shorten your reins, you can stay more stable through your body and you're able to better communicate with your horse. In this exercise called long to short reins, we're gonna practice um, quickly shortening the reins. So this is a really good one if you're riding on a loose rein, maybe it's your warm up, your cool down, or you're out on a trail ride and you need to quickly adjust your reins. 
This is a really good way to practice doing that. So it has a very practical use, but it also helps with contact and with just developing, being able to keep an even feel of the reins and general rein handling. The more comfortable that you get with handling your reins, being able to adjust them quickly and efficiently, the better that you'll be able to handle any situation that comes up and also the better that you will be with the more subtle rein adjustments as well. So for um, going from a long to short rein, we're gonna start here. I have my hand on the buckle, the other hand off of the reins, and I'm gonna take this hand that's off and I'm gonna put it around both reins. So I've got it around both reins. I do have my uh, middle two fingers through two. You can also even just put it their whole hand around both reins. I've got this one around both. Now I'm gonna pull this hand that's holding the end holding on the buckle or what's often called the bite of the rein. I'm gonna pull that up as this hand goes down and pushes into the neck. So there's two really important things happening here and it's important to get the, the uh, mechanics of this exercise really correct. So by this hand pushing on the neck, it's stabilizing my upper body. Maybe that's not important when we're just standing here, but we wanna practice this, that if we're in a situation where we were on a long rein and our horse spooked or our horse started to um, run off, got scared or startled by something, we wanna be stabilizing ourselves. So this hand pushes on the neck to stabilize, allows the reins to slide through. This hand is gonna pull up in this diagonal fashion. So see, I'm coming across my body and I'm taking my elbow up. The reason it's important to do it this way is I can bring my arm up and make this big movement with my arm, but my upper body stays very stable. If I make that same motion pulling back here, now I've had to kind of twist my body, I've had to round my back, and it's gonna put me in a more unstable position. So really important, again, starting from here, the other hand goes around both reins, slides and pushes on the neck. At the same time, this hand is gonna slide up and diagonally and experiment a little bit with bringing this up in different ways and feel where you can stay most stable in your body, most especially through your back. Okay, so this is what it looks like in one fluid motion. Hand comes, goes to the neck as this is pulling up. So now from this point where I've got this hand stable on the neck, this hand pulling up, now I'm gonna drop the reins out of this hand as I reach down and I take my rein and now I've got both reins and I've got contact in both reins and I can do whatever I need to do from here. So in one fluid motion, what that's gonna look like, this hand's coming on and sliding down to the neck as this one's pulling up, this one's stabilizing on the neck. Now I can let go with this hand, I can reach down and I can take my other rein. Okay, so I'm getting ready to do this at the walk. Again, I'm gonna do it in one smooth motion. As this hand comes up, this hand comes down to the reins, this one's sliding to the neck as this one pulls up, and then I can drop that hand down and take my reins in both hands. So where this also trains a sense of feel is right now I'm not wanting to ask her to halt from here. So I'm, as I'm bringing this hand down to the neck and pulling this one up, I'm not taking a lot of tension in it. I'm just putting my hand here at the neck. Here I had to steer just a little bit. She got distracted by something outside. Just taking this one to the neck, dropping down, taking my reins in both hands. Now, if I was to do this with um, putting more pressure on the reins, and that might be something that I would do depending on the situation. If I was using this in an emergency, this hand comes on, this one pulls up all the way to the neck. I'm taking more contact. I'm also coming back a little with my body. And you could see I got a halt there even before I reached down and took the reins in both hands. All right, let's look at this at trot. Okay, so now here at the trot, I'm riding on my loose rein. This hand is gonna come, take both reins as this one pulls up. Notice I can still keep posting as I do this. This hand comes to the neck. I could even still steer a little bit if I need to. So I'm holding this position for you to see. This one's gonna come down, take the reins in one hand. One more time off the other side. Now I'm gonna do it really quickly. And that's the other thing that you wanna start to do as you practice this is first do really slow, really focus on the movement through it. And then you can start picking up the pace and doing this quicker so that it just becomes completely automatic. And that's long reins to short reins.
So in uh, Stay in the Saddle, in this book, there are um, 67 exercises, but there's hundreds of combinations to create uh, different training programs to plan your ride. And this is so much more than a book because in here there's a, a link to a video and a full video program that comes with this so that you can see, just like we did here, a little demonstration and some troubleshooting for each one of the exercises. There is a link down below where you can learn more about the book, get the details and get a copy of the book and everything that comes with it for yourself. So thank you so much for watching and as always, enjoy the ride. We'll see you next time.